Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from creativecodingclub.com where I teach thousands of developers how to use GSAP, scroll trigger, SVG animations, and so much more to help you discover the joy of animating with code, all right? Now today what I wanna do is show you this amazing animation on the variables website, okay? It's this cool little scroll-driven curve that grows and a little bit of a highlight moves over it. And what we're gonna do is just sort of dissect some of the key parts and within about five minutes, I'm gonna walk you through how to build about 90% of it, all right? So sit back, watch, enjoy, subscribe if you're on YouTube, and let's get going. First, we're going to explore and grab the SVG stroke. I want you to notice that we have four strokes here in the SVG. First, we have the dark gray stroke, we have the light gray stroke, which follows the mouse around, and the orange stroke. Maybe asking, where's the fourth stroke? Well, pay attention to the way the light gray stroke has a square cap on the end, but if I go to the left, it fills in the rounded cap of the dark gray stroke, or it appears to fill it in all the way. Well, that's achieved because the gray stroke is masked by the fourth stroke that we can't see, and that mask has a rounded end. We can see how that looks in the code by doing a right click and inspect, and you'll see that we have one, two, three paths, and inside this mask, there is the fourth path. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this SVG element and go to copy, copy element. We can close the inspector and head on over to this tab where I have boxy SVG open. I'm gonna to go to File, New From Clipboard, and what you're going to see is that we get a new browser tab showing the SVG in Boxy. I'm going to open up the Elements panel where you can see the source of the SVG code again. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering, where's that orange stroke segment? Well, the issue here is that things like this bottom path here for the stroke color are using style information that Boxy doesn't have access to. I'm gonna go ahead and close the elements panel and jump on over to the stroke settings. And for the stroke color, you'll see I can apply this green color right where the orange color was on the website. If I scroll down here to where we have the stroke offset, what I can do is scrub this around and you'll see that little segment is rendered using a combination of the stroke dash array and offset. If I zero out all these values, you'll see it's the same exact stroke as all the others. Now, I don't wanna go into explaining all the different strokes because we're not gonna be using them all. In fact, I'm gonna go into the elements panel here and I'm gonna start just deleting things that we don't need. And we're only going to be left with this one path here, which is the solid gray one. Again, I wanna keep this quick and just focus on a few key characteristics of the animation. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy out this outer SVG, and let's build the first animation in CodePen. Over here in CodePen, I have my typical standard bare bones file. And in the HTML panel here, I'm just going to paste in the SVG code, and now you'll see it rendered on the left. Now what I wanna do with GSAP is animate these values in the D attribute so that I can start with a flattened curve and animate it to this sort of nice bent curve here. I'm gonna go ahead and give this path an ID of path full so that I can easily target it with GSAP. I'm gonna head on over to my JavaScript panel and I wanna point out that in the settings, I am loading GSAP, GS DevTools, and Draw SVG plugin, which we've used tons before in my courses. I've got a timeline ready for some animations and that timeline is already hooked up to GS DevTools so that we can scrub through our timeline and explore it. The first thing I wanna put in my timeline is a from tween that targets my path full. And what we're going to do is animate the D attribute. So I'm gonna pass in ATTR to target an attribute and using the object syntax, I want to target the D attribute and pass in the starting values of that flattened curve. And you may be asking, where do I get those values from? Well, we can jump back to the variable site, and I'm just gonna scroll to a point where that curve is flattened out, you know, right about there is fine, and I'm going to right click, inspect, and now inside that path, I can get the flattened D attributes, 
Command C to copy. We'll hop on back to my file and I'm going to paste them in. And now you'll see the animation. Check that out. Pretty nice. Scrub back. We start flat. We're animating from those values to the values we have in the SVG. Beautiful. Next, we can animate a lighter stroke segment. So real quick, I'm going to select the path that we already have, copy it, and paste it. I'm going to give it the ID of path highlight, and let's just change the stroke color to 777, which will be a much lighter color. And now what you'll see is that we have that new light path, and we are animating the full path, all right? No surprises there. I'm now going to head into the JavaScript so that I can show just a small segment of the light path. To do that, I'm going to use a gsap.set. I'm going to target path highlight and I'm going to tell the draw SVG plugin to show just a segment between 0% and 25%. And now we'll see just a quarter of that highlighted section. Now clearly it's not animating with the full path but we can change that by just adding that ID to this selector string here. And now both of them animate together. Ooh! Now to animate this segment, we're gonna use the same basic syntax as this set, but we'll just do it with a two tween. For the draw SVG settings, I'm gonna pass in 75% as the start point, 100% as the end, and we'll use a longer duration and start at 0.5 seconds later. And now we have the curve animate and then the path move. To wrap up, we'll just take this tween here, copy it, paste it, and let's move it back to maybe 25%, 50%. And there you have it, folks, our final animation. Now I know it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the variable site, but we got like 80% there in just over five minutes with literally like three lines of code and I was able to explain it all along the way. Now clearly, again, the variable site is really smooth. It's well executed with immaculate design. And there's a few extra features. Of course, you know, it's scroll driven. We talked a little bit about the masking so that we can have the flat edge line up with the rounded edge down here. And of course, there's this really nice, elegant rollover that's happening. And I want to assure you that none of those individual pieces on their own is all that complicated. It's just a matter of piecing them all together. Now, although I can't build all this out right now, I do want to leave you with this little bonus demo where I made those hotspots interactive, okay? When each button gets rolled over, we just create a new tween with new draw SVG settings. So folks, I've got to get going now, but again, I'll give you those two demos for you to explore. And I encourage you to check out creativecodingclub.com where you can unlock over 200 videos of my GSAP training, all right? I'm gonna walk you through all these tools and keep it real simple so that you can learn the basics and progress to advanced skills where you'll be building this stuff on your own. That's my ultimate goal, and I hope to see you in the club. Thanks for watching.